Uh, thanks everyone for taking some time out of your day to come to the webinar. Um, I think this is a pretty, pretty hot topic right now, pretty popular, and also very timely that we're doing it, you know, in this part of the year. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into the program. So this is me, Chris Campbell, uh, been in FDA for, you know, FDA regulated industry for most of my uh, professional life, 25 years. Uh, I've pretty much done everything in, in a pharmaceutical environment from uh, clinical trial stuff to working on the floor as an operator, you know, coding tablets, presses, and then, you know, as I went on, I moved into higher and higher levels of responsibility and ending as a director of quality and regulatory affairs. So I started at the bottom and, you know, worked my way up. And as you can see, I was in the Navy. Um, so if you ever need a validation person, go look for ex-Navy nukes because the paperwork for working on a nuclear submarine and changing a bolt is actually more rigorous than a, a validation protocol. So um, just a little tidbit there. All right, let's go ahead and get moving. Agenda, so quickly, uh, we're gonna learn about CSA, understand some FDA thinking, look at some differences, uh, identify some success factors and some hot points. I'm gonna do some examples, very simple ones, just to get the point across. And then we're going to talk about, well, you know, heck, why isn't this, you know, guidance approved yet? So what are they waiting on? So we'll, we'll talk about all that stuff. All right, so let's get into it then. So why has CSA come about? So some people, what is CSA anyway? So it's, it's a new term that the FDA's coined called computer software assurance versus the old term CSV. So the FDA is putting this guidance out to promote a quality centric look at how we validate things rather than a prescriptive thou shalt this and that um, so that we can change our focus uh, from a satisfying FDA regulatory stuff to satisfying our internal quality and having higher quality outcomes. Additionally, all the new technologies that are out there, if you use the CSV approach, it can be quite a burden. So this is gonna definitely help to implement new technologies at our companies. Hence, FDA has undertaken this uh, guidance to alleviate the burden of traditional CSV. So I'm pretty happy because uh, you know CSV in the past, especially in the early days when uh, 21 part 11 came out, it was a big, large cost and very difficult. And so this is kind of the evolution, I think, that the FDA is kind of, for once, making things a little easier. <clears throat> so traditional CSV, you know, we all know what it is. It's a comp, you know, during software um, development, we, verification activities we do, you know, we write scripts, IQ, OQ, PQ, um, scripted approach, tells the tester what to do. Again, very burdensome. So the new CSA uh, validation guidance recommends things like this mindset of software quality assurance with a focus on preventing defects during development, heavily, heavily use of risk-based approach. Uh, they talk about critical thinking in the guidance quite a bit. About how, and this really applies to um, risk assessment and what kind of testing you really need to do. Uh, the use of unscripted testing is now okay once this guidance is made um, final. Uh, minimizing risk to patient safety, product quality. So again, they're trying to shift the organizational focus to a quality-centric mantra. And again, being able to use new technologies um, more efficiently and effectively and being able to put them into production without the huge burdens that could be associated with them.